Now before we start, it's preferred to take fire spells for said combat runes. Also, no elemental staff required, as you will have to use a very specific staff later, so bring both the fire and air runes. To begin the quest, head to the area located here on the map. Speak to Lokar, just here north, and choose the chat options on screen. Next, head to the east and speak to Brandis the Chiefsman inside the Long Hall. This is where you finish the Fremnic Trials quest. Speak to him. And choose the first chat option. You will receive a Seal of Passage. Head back to Lokar. Now it's important that you wear this amulet all the time with you. Speaking to anybody on Lunar Island will kick you out, so make sure to always wear this. Speak to Lokar and choose the first chat option. Head up the stairs twice and speak to the captain. And choose the fourth chat option. After the conversation, speak to the captain once again. And after that second attempt, head south, climb down the ladder. And speak to Bird Eye Jack. Then speak to the captain once again. Choose the second chat option. Return to Bird's Eye Jack for the second time. Speak to him. and then head back to the captain. You must now speak to the crewman. You'll have to do this in a very specific way, so I suggest following exactly as I do. First, speak to Eagle Eye Schultz at the north part of the ship. Next, head to the bottom of the ship. You'll have to head down two sets of ladders.
and speak to Beefy Burns. Next, speak to Lecheros Lee at the very top of the ship. There is a ladder right next to the captain. Next, climb down the ladder once and speak to first mate Davy Boy. And lastly, Head up the stairs and speak to the cabin boy. Make sure you have two free inventory spots. You should receive an emerald lens and a bullseye lantern. Use both items on each other and of course light it. You will now need to wipe away a few curse marks on the ship. There are four of them. You can do this in any order you'd wish, or just follow along with what I do. Your first mark is right beside you. Go ahead and use your green lantern on the cannon. Then click the first chat option to wipe it away. Next, climb down the ladder once. And enter the southernmost room and use your lantern on the northwestern chart. Then click the first chat option to wipe it away. Next, climb down two sets of ladders to the bottom of the ship. Right next to you, you will find a chest. Go ahead and use your lantern on said chest. And choose the first chat option to wipe it away. Next, on the same floor, head all the way south, east of the cook. And use your lantern on the two stacks of crates. And wipe it away. And lastly, use your lantern on the support column just a few steps to your north, then wipe it away. With that out of the way, head upstairs and speak to the captain once again. After the conversation, you will now find yourself in Lunar Island. Next, head down both sets of ladders and head north into the city. You will get a short cutscene. Now before we move ahead, you will notice a lodestone. We unfortunately cannot activate said lodestone until much later. Moving along, head southwest and speak to Mitoria.
After the conversation, exit the city and head northeast and attack some Suquas. You will need to do this until you obtain one Suqua tooth and four hides. Magic, more specifically fire spells, work really great here. Feel free to pause the video and continue once you've obtained said items. With that out of the way, head southeast of the ship once you came from, and speak to the Omnimancer. She is right next to the altar. Next, head back to the city, making sure you have at least one free inventory spot. And just to your north, you will find a chicken house. Enter it. And speak to Baba Yaga, and choose a second chat option. You should now have a special vial. Exit the building, and just to your south you will find a water source. Go ahead and use your vial on said water source. Then use both of your herbs, the Guam and the Marantil, on said vial. Then right click and crush your Suqua tooth. and use that powder on the vial as well. With your potion complete, head back to the Orneromancer on the southeastern part of the island once again. Speak to her. And hopefully after the conversation, she takes your vial. After the conversation, go ahead and use your Dreaming Staff on these four rune altars in this specific order air fire water and earth now the process is straightforward just use it on the altar so feel free to pause the video and continue once you've done so on your fourth altar once the staff is complete head back to lunar isle and speak to the omnimancer Speak to her, and for the following chat options, make sure to exhaust every option to receive each piece of lunar clothing. After that conversation, head all the way north to the area with the Suquas once again. You will find a ladder. Climb down. And on the western side, you will find some ores. Go ahead and mine it for a lunar ore. Go ahead and smell that ore on any furnace. Note, there is a furnace on Lunar Isle, but this one will not work in this case. Go to any other furnace. Personally, I chose the furnace in Friendly Provenance. Use the ore on the furnace. Then use the bar on any anvil. You should now have a helmet. Head back to Lunar Isle. Enter the city, and on the northwestern side, you will find an NPC by the name of Pauline. Talk to her. 
You'll be asked two questions. Go ahead and respond with these answers. Next, head south and speak to Mitoria. As before, she will send you to hunt some suquas. So head northeast and do that. And keep slaying the suquas until you obtain a special tiara. Once obtained, speak to Mitoria. Next, head northeast, around the entrance of the city, and south of the bank you will find an NPC by the name of Remy Sirlasis. Speak to her, and choose a second chat option. Then speak to her again, and choose the second then the first chat option. She will now tan your hides. Go ahead and craft a trouser, torso, gloves, and boots from your hides. If for some reason you forgot your thread, the NPC you just talked to does sell some. You can now bank any extra armor you brought. Make sure to wear your seal of passage, or you'll be kicked out of the city. Now in this clip, I don't have my armor in my inventory or worn. Uh, just ignore that for now. Next, head to the center of the city and speak to an NPC called Celine. And choose a second chat option. Next, head just south of the city, as shown here on the map. Go ahead and dig on some blue flowers, as I'm highlighting here, and you should receive a ring. In case you do not receive a ring, you might have missed the chat option with Celine. Now with your ring and armor, head southeast and speak to the Ornariomancer once again. Speak to her. And she should take your gear, then give it back instantly. Next, use your kindling on the vial for some soaked kindlings. Head into the lunar bank. You can deposit any weapon you might have except for the lunar staff as this is going to be your only weapon moving forward. Also, withdraw any runes and perhaps a little bit of food. As you can see by my inventory, I took a few pies and that worked just fine. Once prepared, head to the building just west of the lodestone. Equip all your lunar gear. Turn on the brassier. Then use your soaked kinglings on it. You will now enter a dream state. Speak to the ethereal NPC. Alright, so on this part of the quest, we have seven minigames to complete. They'll all vary by length and complexity. You can do these in any order you'd wish. The timestamps will be in the description or just follow what I do. For our first minigame, dicing, head southwest and step on the green platform. To begin, speak to the NPC. Now, I recommend watching what I do first to make it perfectly clear. It 
In this minigame, you must add up the dices to the number given to you. In my case right here, it's 20. Every dice on the floor will represent two individual numbers. And this is what you cycle through. Here on screen, I have the numbers highlighted. Also, all the combinations will be linked in the description to the wiki for a much easier time. So I'll go ahead and do my first two puzzles. Now it's not entirely clear how much of them we have to solve, but eventually you will finish the minigame. So here's the solution to my first puzzle, which is 20. As you can see here on screen, the numbers do add up to 20. So let's go to the second one. In my case, it's 27. And here's the answer to 27. Again, the answers will be in the description for the wiki. Feel free to pause the video and continue when complete. Once you have completed, you will be teleported out. And speak to the NPC in the center once again. Next, head southeast and step on the light purple platform. and speak to the NPC. In this minigame, we'll receive a pattern sequence of numbers and we must complete it with the next number in its sequence. This number ranges between zero and nine. You can follow the link in the description for all the answers. Like the previous puzzle, I'll do one or two as an example. For my first puzzle, I have 2, 3, 5, and 6. Referring back to the picture, I need to select 8, then 9. My second puzzle is 9, 8, 7, 6. Referring back to the picture, I'll need to select 5, then 4. Just like the puzzle before, you'll eventually finish it. Once it's complete, speak to the ethereal NPC in the center of the room. Next, head to the purple platform to the north. Speak to the NPC and choose the first chat option. You should receive a hatchet. In this minigame, you simply chop the trees to the west and deposit them in the southern center pile. Repeat the process till you've accumulated 20 logs. Then you'll be teleported out. And speak to the NPC to move forward. Next, head to the northwestern platform, the gray one. And speak to the NPC to start. In this minigame, it's all about trial and error. If you recall this moment from the underground path quest, this puzzle is exactly the same, except on a 4x8 grid. Unfortunately, the solution is different for every player, so I could only help you so far. 
I highly recommend writing down or doodling your progression. Perhaps something like this or like that. Just keep tabs. With that said, feel free to pause the video and continue once you've made it to the other side. Once complete, speak to the ethereal in the center of the room. Next, head to the east and step on the green platform. Now, before we speak to the NPC, I suggest watching what I do. Go ahead and speak with him and choose the first chat option to start the race. You simply need to make your way through the path and attempt to jump the magical obstacles. You'll definitely fail a few times, but that's okay as the ethereal walks pretty slow. Once you reach the end, you'll be teleported out. And again, speak to the NPC in the center to move ahead. Next, head to the sign platform on the southeast side. In this minigame, you simply mimic the NPC's emotes. So, hopefully you know your way through the emote interface. So when you're ready, speak to him to start. I'll do a few of them as an example. After a while, you will be teleported out. And do not talk to the NPC in the center. And now for the last minigame. Make sure your staff is equipped for combat. And speak to the NPC in the center. And choose the first chat option to fight. The fight itself is very easy as he only has 6k life points. Just like the others, once complete you'll be teleported out. Once teleported out, read the link turn in the middle of the room and click the first chat option. You will now find yourself outside of the dream. With all that out of the way, we can finish the quest by speaking to the Ornarium answer. Speak to her. And quest complete. Before we end the video, here are some additional rewards apart from the Lunar Spellbook and the creation of the Astral Runes you might want to take a look into.